You know, one of the things that we wanted to do in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 ministries is that we wanted it to be as real with no pretense and no phony setting up, oh, I don't know, long-winded dissertations of theological premise or some kind of professional studio <laughs> and go back and do sound editing and add lights, action camera to it. Because we wanted the reality of God to come into your home and your living room as well as your life in the way that you are, the way you are. And in doing that, I had my sandwich. <laughs> oh no! You mean there's a guy that's sitting on the internet eating and talking about Jesus? Man, that can't be real. What are you going to do next? Drink? <laughs> oh boy, can we go get a glass of wine? <laughs> now, if my wife were here, she'd probably shoot me. But since the Lord is, I think you'll find that it was a common practice among Jews, and still is to this day, that you sit down and have a meal, and because the meal lasts so long, you talk and you share and you relate as you're eating. I mean, I know there are people that go to church on Sunday morning, you know, and then they go to lunch on Sunday afternoon, but I'm not so sure that they talk about God in between time. <laughs> now me, I used to ask people, what did you get out of the sermon? What did you learn today? What did God speak to you in a special way? How did that fit? What do you remember about it? What, what's sticking out? What, what do you run and research later? And because I used to do that, <laughs> believe me, ministries would snatch me up, you know, want me to help them or work behind the scenes doing something for them, whatever it may be. But the reality is, is your daily life is where Jesus wants to be. He doesn't want to be stuck on a mountaintop, you know, transfigured so that you could build some temple, you know, and, you know, going to see the spirit in the sky kind of idea, but he's real. He was at the beach after he rose from the dead. He called his disciples and he had prepared fish for them. He had actually started a fire. Yes, God went out, collected the wood, kindled the fire, and was cooking fish for them to eat even as I'm eating this morning. Mmm. And you know, it's delicious. And while you're watching, listening and praying, why don't you go get something to eat? Why don't you sit down with a cup of coffee? If you're being sneaky, go get a glass of wine. And be real with your God. Talk to Him. Walk with Him. Share the concerns of your heart daily as you know Him in a personal, intimate way. Because the consciousness of the call, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9.16 We are often, and most of the time, forget the mystical, supernatural touch of God. If you can tell where you got the call of God and all about it, I question whether you have had a call at all. The call of God does not come like that. It is a much more supernatural. The realization of it in a man's life may come with a sudden thunderclap or with a gradual dawning, but in whatever way it comes, it comes with the undercurrent of the supernatural, something that cannot be put into words. 
and it is always accompanied with a glow. At any moment there may be the sudden consciousness of this incalculable, supernatural, surprising call that has taken hold of your life. I have chosen you. You know, when I think about that, I spent most of my life experiencing lots of supernatural things, lots of phenomenal experiences that most people don't even get a chance to even imagine, <laughs> much less experience. And people would come up to me and say, well, what's your gift? I say, God gave me all the gifts, because that's what I was taught at the time. I mean, you know, they said, whatever gifts you need, God will give to you, so, you know, you got all the gifts. Okay, because according to Scripture, you know, I've been made an heir, joint heir with Jesus Christ, and I can inherit all things like he did, and so, you know, to me, it was like, what do you mean, with gifts? <laughs> and so they would smile at me and walk away, you know. They'd come up to me and say, well, what's your calling? I said, to get saved. Uh, no, what's your calling? Uh, well, to know Jesus. Uh, no, 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 you don't get it. What's your calling? I said, well, I'm making my calling an election, sure. <laughs> and I said, okay, and they'd walk away smiling and pat me on the head and let me go my way. Maybe you've experienced that. Maybe you're waiting for something like in this book where they talk about some roll out the sky, the trumpets will sound, and the anointing of God will come upon you because somebody will lay hands and say, you are this. Well, maybe it will. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't experience it that way. But Jesus did come to me and he spoke audibly because I was doubting that I fit in anywhere. Because you see, after everybody laid this trip on me about your calling and your gifting and your election and your this and that and everything else, then God came to me and said, in a conversation audibly and spoke to me interactively, and he made one statement in it that I've stuck with me through the, all of my life. He said, there is a place for you in my kingdom. From that moment on, I have never doubted my place or my calling in God. What it is, <laughs> quite frankly, and bluntly, is a humble sandwich eater with God. The call of God has nothing to do with salvation and sanctification. It is not because you are sanctified that you are therefore called to preach the gospel. The call to preach the gospel is infinitely different. Paul describes, describes it as necessity. If you have been obliterating the great supernatural call of God in your life, take a review of your circumstances and see where God has not been first put your idea of service or your supernatural abilities aside. Paul said, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He had realized that the call of God was to preach. Did you know that's what your calling is? To share Jesus. Don't go looking for anything else. Don't try to be anything else. Go somewhere. Sit down. Have a burger, get in and out burger, <laughs> Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King. Whatever the East Coast version is, and the West Coast, and the North and South Coast. But understand, sometimes the supernatural isn't the important but the practical reality that you are called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who are unsaved, that they might be saved. Because there is no other thing more important than saving a soul from hell 
than what you think you are called to do to make a ministry out of you. You know what I think I'll do? While it's getting louder and louder over here, if you're coming closer and closer, I think I'll go eat my sandwich. How about you? And maybe I might even preach the gospel.